have seen in the previous video that a cell cycle has two major phases. Do you remember the names of the two phases? That's right, interphase and emphase. We have seen that the interphase lasts longer in duration compared to the M phase. The major reason being that the interphase deals with preparation for the actual division which occurs in the M phase. Now in this video, let's have a look at both these phases in detail. Since these phases are quite complex, we divide them in substages to understand them better. Let's begin with the interphase first. Here is an image that depicts the complete interface in general. As we can see, the phase has three stages. Let's begin each stage step by step. The first stage of the interface is the first gap phase, abbreviated as G1 phase. This is the first phase occurring in interface, hence the name first gap phase. It corresponds to the interval between the M phase of the previous cycle and the S phase of the current cycle. Since this is the first stage of the interface, that is, the first stage of the preparatory phase and the phase which precedes synthesis of DNA, what do you think will be the activities of the cell? Just think about it. Well, as the cell is metabolically active, it grows in size in the G1 phase. All the organelles duplicate in this phase and the building blocks which will be required in later stages are made by the cell. It is important to note that the G1 phase does not involve DNA replication. Now let's move to the second stage of interphase which is the synthesis phase, abbreviated as S phase. As the name suggests, there will be synthesis of something. And what will that something be? The most crucial part of each cell, that's the nucleus, along with the genetic material within, will get synthesized, that is, duplicated. So the S phase takes up the charge of the DNA replication. Now, along with the nucleus, there is one more important organelle that gets duplicated in the S phase. Do we know this bundle of threads present in the cell? That is called the centrosome. This bunch contains smaller organelles called the centrioles placed within, usually at right angles. They are made up of microtubules which help in releasing the threads required for separating sister chromatids later. We will have a detailed look at this process in our upcoming videos. For now, all we need to know is that these threads are important for the cell division. And for this reason, duplication of the bundle containing these threads is also important. This happens in the S phase. So the S phase takes up the responsibility of duplicating the contents inside the nucleus and the centrosome present in the cytoplasm simultaneously. What next then? The next step in the process of the interface is the second gap phase, abbreviated as G2 phase. This phase allows the cell to grow more. Along with the enlargement in the cell size, the cell also makes more proteins and organelles. The most important function of this phase is that it prepares the cell for mitosis. This phase helps the cell to prepare for the actual cell division in the M phase. So now, are we set to study the next phase? That is, the M phase? No, not yet. We are yet to study one more intermediate phase. A stage which can be entered post the M phase of one cycle and before the G1 phase of the next cycle. There is a phase called the G0 phase in between. So why didn't we talk about this phase in the beginning before the G1 phase? Well, the cells may or may not opt to enter this phase. The cells may enter the G0 phase or may directly enter the G1 phase after the cell division. And what factor decides this? Well, there are several intrinsic and extrinsic factors like resource availability or nutritional deprivation which can force the cell to enter this G0 phase. But what exactly happens in this phase? This phase was classically thought to be only a resting phase as the cell is metabolically active but does not show tendency to divide further. However, recent studies suggest different names for this phase. If the cells enter the G0 phase such that they returned to G1 phase after some time, 
then it's called the quiescent stage. That means the cells will be metabolically active but only arrest its further division. However, they can re-enter the G1 phase as and when possible. So this kind of phase where the G0 phase can be reversed to enter G1 will be the quiescent stage. But if the cells enter the G0 phase irreversibly, then they are set to enter the senescent phase. That means the cells will only be metabolically active but never show the tendency to divide further. Hence, this phase is called senescent phase, the one from where there is no return towards further division. So depending upon the extrinsic and the intrinsic factors, the cells enter the G0 phase which is a metabolically active phase. The only difference is that the cells do not divide further either for some amount of time or permanently. So G0 phase is the phase where the cell division halts, keeping the cell highly active otherwise. Now that we've had a look at all the important phases in the interface, let's have a look at the next important part of the cell cycle, that is the M phase. This could be mitosis or meiosis, depending upon the type of cells. To our surprise, even this M phase shows different stages. Let us begin with mitosis and its subphases in our upcoming videos. Do subscribe to our channel and happy learning!